Uh, anyway, that's what we're watching here, and that's why you have to take profits, you know, when they're given to you because you don't know. This thing can it backed off a dollar, a dollar, what a dollar sixty a barrel, and it's already gained back another eighty cents on that. So it's jumping around quite a bit over there in the crude oil. So you got to be able to take advantage of that. So. Here's what I want to talk to you about. Our guest today, by the way, oh, two things, very, very important. Last night's action, I have to show you today because it was very, very important what happened in the S&P here today. Uh, we get this up here to take a quick look at it, and we should be okay. There we are. This is the S&P cash, folks. You'll notice here we went up and we made a 382 retracement of the high that we made back here. That was the high, and we come down and made a new low. So we're at major support down here that we hit today. We're bouncing back a little bit. So we'll see if that's going to mean very much at all. We don't we don't really know for sure, but we're certainly going to be watching it uh, no matter what happens, uh, seeing this thing unfold today. I'm sorry for my voice, folks, but I have, um, I've been, I have a, a frog in my throat along with two minnows and a grasshopper, so nothing else. It's not allergies. It's just that my throat is raspy. I can't do anything about it. I wanted to sh share a chart here from our good friend Rich Anderson. He, this is showing you the amount of a bulls versus bears percentage uh, over the last uh, 18 months. And what's interesting, you'll notice uh, if you'll mark the highs and lows on these things, you'll see that uh, when we're at these high levels, uh, sometimes you get a sell-off. But the fact that we've had Apple down, what, seven days in a row, and the first time in a decade, at least that's they reported that statistic. I don't know. I'm just reporting it on. But that's going to be interesting to see if that's going to be the uh, the main thing that's going to be make, making these markets move, you know, that the way they do. I hope that helps as we go through some of these things here today and look at them. The next one that I'd like to show you, folks, is the uh, the German DAX because uh, we'll get this up here today. It had some really nice patterns in here, all ABCD related. And that's going to be interesting to see what uh, what is going on uh, with some of these things here today. As you can see here, there's where we are here with this. So we're going to find out whether it means very much or not. And uh, we'll do one thing at a time as, as we go through looking at these things. But you can see the large ABCD here on the uh, DAX has already completed right up there. And then we started to sell off again. So it's going to be uh, the charts not still coming through. Uh oh, that's not a good sign, Larry. Hold on just a second. I got another chart to bring up that I that I think is relatively important, and that's the one on. Uh, I want to spend a little bit of time here. Oh, doggone it, folks! There's stock in the news called WeWork. I don't know anything about it. It's the first time I ever heard of it, but they were talking about it today. Uh, it was an IPO a few years ago at 19 cents. It's now selling for 13 cents. The reason why I want to spend some time with this, folks, because this happens to a lot of people. They get hooked into buying something and holding on it forever. Folks, there's got to be a point in here. Somewhere in this chart, at least when you think when it goes below this level, you got to think that there's something wrong in the company. You could have recouped half your money at this level right here. Now it's all tapioca, 13 cents. Your downside is 13 cents. And the guy came on that ran the company and says, we have no chance. I mean, what kind of deal is that? I mean, he, he should take a positive thinking course, but he has, I, I, it's none of my business. All I'm trying to tell you here is you've got to be able to protect your backside when you're trading these things. So one thing that you want to do, and I, I did this before, that's how I've done this, done stupid things like that. That's how I lost my money in 74. I knew that the Russians were going to come back in buying grain. Well, they did, but it was four and a half years later. So, you know, that's that's what you've got to think about. How much money can you lose on this darn thing? And that's that's pretty much it. I spent one one whole day trading with David Paul. He passed away on July 19th, and I I just could not believe how calm he was. And he only traded stocks. He was very methodical, and he said, "I look for very low risk opportunities to have a chance to make big money." So that's what his whole thing was about. He said, "You want to go for the big one," and that's what he trained Tom Hugard to do. And Tom is a master at it. He can press like I've never seen before. His motto is, when you think you've made enough money, get in there and sell some more. That's basically what you're looking at when you're watching these things. So I hope that makes sense as you watch these things unfold today. But uh, that's what we're paying attention to today. So 
I, I hope that gives you some help. We're going to have Shane on early today because he's got some really important stuff, and uh, I think it's going to be really good. Uh, tomorrow uh, we will have on uh, – tomorrow is Wednesday, uh, I believe. No, today is Wednesday. No, yep, today is Wednesday. Tomorrow we are going to have Paula Webb, and on Friday we will have uh, – our good friend Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights will be our guest there. So just keep in mind this chart here, folks, because you see it a lot. You've seen it in Carvana. You've seen it in the, the, the Beyond Meat and all the member, all of the Telray, all of the, 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 uh, uh, well, the, uh, the marijuana stocks. I mean, you just got to put a stop in there somewhere, you know. That's one of the reasons why I do the thing for TFNN. You know, I'm I'm not going to get caught into that because I've already done that before. I, I owe the O'Briens a lot for letting me on, be on the air like that. I'm not going to let people lose all their money with false hope, and that's it. Uh, Bernard Baruch in his book, My Own Story, he was, he was actually uh, J.P. Morgan's closest personal friend, and he said, I'll talk about that another time. We're going to have our good friend Shane Spolian coming on next, folks. We'll be right back. Candlestick Pattern Analysis is a primary tool among successful traders, and you should be no different. Candlestick Patterns can demystify buy points, sell points, general price movement, and so much more. At 4 p.m. on Monday, August 14th, trader Teddy Kekstadt will be hosting a live, hour-long webinar on Japanese candlestick patterns. Teddy, the author of the Tiger Forex Report, has been trading for 33 years, and candlestick patterns have been instrumental to his success. For just $97, see how to use candlestick patterns to analyze stocks and options in order to capitalize on market swings, increase your odds of success, and decrease your risk. During this live webinar, you will learn when to use and when not to use Japanese candlestick patterns in this volatile market. Dispel the myths about this strategy and see just how much the mastery of candlestick pattern recognition can impact your trading. Visit TFNN.com today. TFNN. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have the wolf trader himself, 
Shane Smolian in the house. How are you, Shane? I'm great. Is this Duke? Duke and Duke? 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Zip code 19147. It is I. Tell Wonderful. us, my friend, what direction are we going here in the stock market? Oh, let's answer that question and then please start off. <laughs> sure. Well, I think there's a good chance we're going to be headed lower here, Larry, for, for probably for a few months. I, I think we're just getting started here uh, with this topping process on the S&P. And there's a, there's a lot of information to go over today to talk about this. But, um, you know, from multiple perspectives, uh, you, you know, if you look at the Fed, what the Fed is doing, the Fed juice, if you look at the Astro, if you look at the cycles, there's a lot of data now that's supporting a decline uh, going out for a few months here. So we can get into this. But I think uh, I think we're it's just starting. OK, let's get started. Let's get it started. OK, so inflation data. I do want to kind of continue on what we were talking about last time that um, I think it's really important that people try to follow AI models as much as possible because I think, you know, we're trying to figure out what's, you know, a lot of people are trying to figure out what's the use of all these AI models and how can we use them. Well, one of them is economic information that we can now get real time reporting. Now, none of these models are perfect and people argue with which model is best. And I just picked this Trueflation model to talk to people about this, that this model is pretty much staying about two months ahead of the government data. Uh, so the government data came down to 3%. This is running at about 2.3%. I figured we would get to 2% in August. I still think there's a good chance we'll get there. And then that means that the U.S. would come down to whatever level we're seeing now in about two months. So just keep an eye on this stuff. I mean, this is the future. And so I always try to keep an eye on what's going on uh, with, the, with the future. And if you take a look at this and you project this out uh, across time, um, you can see that we are right into this 2% zone. So I think I think the Fed knows we're pretty much there now. I know they said that's going to be out like 2025 or something that they said, but I think we're going to be there in a couple months, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, the, with the slowdowns that we're seeing in many sectors of the economy, I think uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a confusing time. There's a lot of mixed data, and we're seeing, obviously, we've seen a very strong stock market. But uh, I think once we hit that 2%, I think that's going to be an objective. So I think we're close to seeing it, and I think that that rally we had, that relief rally, had a real sense of euphoria in there when that last inflation number came down to that three percent. So, just something to consider. Uh, we're, it's something. It's a work in progress. We're trying to find different models to, to kind of mm -hmm. look at different angles of the situation. Uh, but I think we're going to be down here for a while. I don't see this going back up. I mean, there are areas that are obviously sticky in the the inflation picture, but um, I think the, the 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 focus is just try to understand. The market through the lens of artificial intelligence. So that's one of the things that I'm trying to do. So S&P 500 here. So this is the first time now that we're starting to see some cracks in this S&P. Uh, this is the 50 versus the 200. I always like to look at just a real basic picture uh, to look at the 50 versus the 200 and things that are very uh, almost common sense. But I think it's important to see this. And now we talked about uh, last July, last January and February when this crossed up. This was a bullish sign. Uh, but we're now coming down to test the 50-day simple moving average. This is the first sign of breakdown that we're seeing. And so we're seeing some choppy markets now. And one of the things that choppy markets allow is for the moving averages to catch up. So I'm going to go into a, a four-hour chart in a, in a few slides just to show you that we're actually catching up now on the four-hour. And it's actually about to make a crossover, a negative crossover for the first time since March. So this is not good. This is not good uh, for the bullish case here. And I think... Uh, and again, this is just moving averages, but I think that we are now starting to see our first signs here. We had this parabolic move. This is the NASDAQ, this black chart here, but we had this parabolic move coming up and we had these, every time we made a higher low or something close to it, I, I put a number here. So you can see that we had 12 different instances here in the NASDAQ. This one did, this one uh, actually came back, back a little bit lower, but we had this pair mm -hmm. essentially this parabolic rise. Now this is the first time that we're actually coming. And I think this par uh, parabolic rise is now broken. And I think we have started. I think people are still in denial about this. Obviously, there's this whole distribution phase going on. But uh, you know, this to me, this is this is some evidence that we're slowing down. But that's not going to help us with the forecast because moving averages are 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 they're lagging. They look backwards in time. Mm -hmm. So I like to look at some things. One of them is divergences. So when we look at the S and P, uh, there's different types of divergences we can look at. But a, a real basic one that I do like to look at here is money flow. 
Uh, anybody can load this. Now, the reason I like MoneyFlow is because it ta it's like an RSI, but it incorporates volume. So we can take into account the concept of volume in here. And you can see that we've had this very pronounced negative divergence in the S&P uh, going all the way back here to, to May. So if you see this letter H here, this is where this starts. And you can see the S&P continues higher here. And we have this consistent uh, negative divergence here in the money flow coming down. Now, typically, the way that these divergences work is they do they will retrace back to where the divergence started. So that puts us back below this 4,300 level into here as a first starting point here. So to me, this is a chart I always like to look, like I said, at moving averages. I like to look at the money flow because the S&P is very respondent to these things. I mean, uh, surprisingly, uh, as complicated as it is. Uh, there are some indicators that are pretty good. So these are two of them that I like to look at, but we are just getting started. We're not even to the, Im the important stuff yet. I'm just pointing out some things wow. that everybody can follow. Just kind of, uh, you can just follow along. You, anybody can put money flow up. Uh, the problem with divergences, Larry, is that they they can go on for a long time. I mean, <laughs> they can go on for months. And mm -hmm. in the case of gold, there's one going on for mm -hmm. oh, going back to, to uh, 2008 that I've been tracking a negative one so they can go they can persist and persist and persist but i like to think of them as as like potential energy building up ready to to be released at some point they do retrace uh most of the time here so i think that's these are some things some signs here some troubling signs for the s p for sure and we saw a real big divergence back in uh 2021 december right before the s p uh made that big turn then uh, right before quantitative tightening so this is just something to look at uh, it's nothing too uh, too earth shattering, but I think it's important for people to look at. Now, I have a chart here showing the the intraday biorhythm here. This is the this is a forecast model that we put out at the beginning of the day. So the biorhythm is the red line here. So you can see uh, this is by the way this is all intraday. This is just what's going on today. But you can see the S and P in the white line here traces out this biorhythm very nicely. It does show us continuing to go down even past six o'clock here. So it shows mm -hmm. this uh, market continuing to be weak. Uh, statistically, today is a very weak day for the S&P. Uh, it's, it's statistically the, the, the weakest day for a big move down. I'll, sh I'll get into that in, in another chart. But this is just kind of an intraday way to look at it. I know, Larry, you have the AI model that you use, right, when you track yes. the intraday? Mm -hmm. So this is kind of similar. Uh, it runs all the time. It's not a cycle. Cycles are basically when the market's closed, the cycle's done. This thing goes, even on holidays, it'll keep running because it's, it's a true biorhythm of the S&P. It's a true rhythm of, of what it does. Um, I do have another intraday chart here. Uh, this is the one that I think is really interesting. Uh, this is a four hour chart, so anybody at home can track this. Uh, this is a 30 day simple moving average versus a 200 day or simple moving average. And this is, when I say days, I'm talking about bars. This is a four hour chart. Uh, but you can see going all the way back here to March 31st, that's, that's when it crossed up. This is when it crossed up here on March 31st, going all the way back to when this rally began. Now, the Fed juice went into a buy right around 420, somewhere into there. Uh, and it went into a sell just recently uh, in uh, July 20th, somewhere into here. So the Fed juice goes into a sell up into here. Uh, but we'll get back to this in the next chart. Yeah, we have to pay a few bills. We'll be right back with the wolftrader.com, folks. Stay tuned. TFNN.com. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com.
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Shane Smolian, TheWolfTrader.com. Please continue, young man. Absolutely. All right, so we talked about this moving average. Now, one of the things that choppy markets do when we get into these distribution phases, it, it allows the moving averages to catch up. So this three, this 30 versus 200 has not crossed since, since March 31st. So interesting chart for sure. It's definitely showing some breakdown here in the S&P. Uh, I'm going to talk about gaps too. Now, I know a lot of your guests talk about unfulfilled market areas that are these gaps where the market gaps up. But there are quite a few gaps here in this S&P. This is the S&P cash here. So there are some gaps down here at the 39, 39, 79, 20, 42, 32, 43, and then 44, uh, 43, 64. So these are gaps on the downside that will most likely fill at some point. Uh, so it left a lot of those on the way up. Now, we do have different models that we look at, too. I have a Paris trade here uh, that we just first started doing this when we wanted to figure out which market to be long in. So recently we were long on the NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ is in a sell versus the S&P. So it's, it's declining more aggressively than the S&P. And that's typically a sign of, of a change of trend. Like the NASDAQ tends to lead the S&P when you have these moves. So that's just one clue here. Here's another Paris trade that we have. This is, a, I put, this is posted daily. So I update this every day. Uh, but this had been in a buy all the way since 322 here. Uh, and so it's it's long S and P short the VIXI. This just now goes into a buy on 8.3. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I don't like to look at just the VIX as an ultimate level, because it can stay down there for months and months and months, and then you know you have to deal with this rising market. In this case, this has shown us a change of trend here. So pretty much no matter what model you look at now, uh, we're starting to see more and more signs. Now I'm I'm kind of easing into the important stuff here. I mean, this is getting more important now, but this is really the most important chart here. Uh, the, the Fed internals have been collapsing, and I've been talking about this for some time. This goes back all the way to June the 1st. This is the most important chart, the, this and the Fed juice that you can look at on the markets because ultimately the markets go back to wherever the Fed sets it to. Okay, So the Fed juice has been declining for this period. Now, this is a really important divergence. Now, we looked at that money flow divergence, but this is the one that you can't see uh, just on any chart. So this is going back to a level of about 42.78. This is where this starts on June the 1st. You can see that this has been steadily declining here. So these Fed internals are eroding. And when this happens, it can't just turn up for a day or two. It take, There's a lot of damage that goes on into here. And I talked to people about this. 
This cannot just be made up in a day or two uh, by the Fed spiking the internals. This takes a long time now. There's a big bubble in here that has to get worked out in these markets. So when that's occurring, it's a big warning sign that something's wrong. If you go all the way back to 2010, there's no instances where the market has survived this. It will always come back and it will always retrace this level into here. If we go back here to this chart here, I, I have a chart here where we have our three important indicators here. We have the Fed juice here. The Fed juice goes into a sell on July the 20th here. You can see this. And it had been in a buy since April the 20th. So that's a long stretch that this was in a buy. Now this isn't in a sell. Uh, the planetary speed index is in a cell and the quad lunar cycle is in a cell. So you have three of these major indicators. I call it a trifecta in a cell now. This is really getting to the important stuff now because when these three are headed lower now, it's very hard for the market to go up. I mean, th this is the fuel of the market. The Fed is the fuel of the market since 2010. And I talked about this in a webinar about artificial intelligence that you cannot look at the market anymore just through human perspectives anymore. You have to understand you have machine trading, you have algos, you have the Fed. You have all of these moving parts now that didn't exist before 2010. So this is why we look at the Fed so importantly, the Fed juice. And it's not just on the S&P. We look at it on other markets too. Uh, but today is statistically a negative day for the S&P. Uh, so, you know, it's it's statistically, it's, 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 it's a negative day. This is the, the statistics here. It's a big, typically it can be the biggest day down and it does not typically like to reverse from the previous day. Now, I know we're seeing a lot of choppy action into here in the S&P, but I like to look at these broad-based indicators because I don't have to worry so much about the day-to-day -day stuff. It gives me a broad, a real nice broad-based picture. Now, we talked about the planetary speed index before. This is the 1929 market crash, and I also have the 1987 market crash. Why am I bringing this up right now? Well, first of all, the markets do follow the speed of the planets here. This is an astro indicator here. And if you go back to every market crash, without exception, it's always there. Uh, there, and there's signatures that show up. There's a Mercury station here uh, going back into September of 1929 and then going into October. We know October is one of the worst one of the worst months for the S&P and the Dow. Although I will say now August and September since 2010 are two of the worst months for the S&P and the, and, and the Dow. So we're moving into a really bad period here in terms of seasonals. But there's always a Mercury station here and the Venus uh, Uranus hard aspect shows up. If you go over to 1987, same thing. Uh, you see the declining planetary speed index, and then you see Mercury station with Venus Uranus. And so here was our 1987 crash. Now, why does the Mercury station have anything to do with it? Well, when we're talking about the planetary speed index, we're talking about how fast are the planets moving. Mercury is a big component of that. And so when Mercury is stationary, this index tends to drop really low. So it's not just Mercury, but these tend to play out. Now, why does all of this matter? Why am I bringing up 1929 and 1987, right? Everything's fine, right? The market's rallying. Everyone's happy. Well, here's the problem. We have a declining planetary speed index right now. This is the current planetary speed index so from 731 down to 817. And we have a Mercury station coming this month. So I'm not saying the market is going to crash per se, but the signatures are there. And we have issues now with the Fed with juice pulling back. Everything's in the cell. Everything's pulling back. Um, and now we have declining astro also. So, it, you know, nothing's for sure, but definitely I don't want to be long on this market right now. Um, I think, you know, this this is setting up the potential here for a very, a, a very, potentially could have a strong decline here coming up in the next, in the next few months. Mm -hmm. And like I said, August, September, October, these were all bad months coming up here. So we have to consider that this, this could be a problem here. Now we talk about geomagnetic activity a lot. This is a new phenomenon that I've gotten into. Um, I the, the paper that I actually got was from the Federal Reserve of Atlanta. They did some research on this, and I'm going to show you some graphs here. Um, these are this. This is the solar storm activity throughout the year, and this tends to have an exact inverse correlation with the the cyclical activity of the stock market. So if you did a, a, a annual cycle, it's a mirror of this. So what does that mean? That means that when these storms increase in intensity, the markets tend to fall. When it tends to fall in intensity, the markets tend to rise. These are disruptors. These solar storms come across and they disrupt the markets. And we're down to the point now where we're forecasting this. Like I try to get it within a couple of hours, even overnight. Mm -hmm. But we're moving into a season here where you're going to have higher solar storms. And when you have higher solar storms, you have a higher chance of disruption. Now, why is that important? Well, let's put it pieces together here. You've got a weak Fed. You've got a declining Fed use. You've got eroding Fed internals. You've got falling planetary speed index. You've got an overextended market. 
Okay, and then you got you have any time these disruptions come, you're going to have about two days of notice. Maybe maybe it's sometimes it's faster than that. Like this is not mm -hmm. these these forecasts are very unreliable compared to like a hurricane or something, right? But at least we can get an idea of when the storm is coming, and they tend to disrupt the markets for a few days, uh, it, and it can be as long as a week if you get a big storm. This was last summer. And so we had this rising market all the way out into early August last summer. Mm -hmm. We had that full moon perigee. And then you can see here, here's the G3 storm comes in and it knocks it down again. And the G2 storm knocks it down again. So these, these storms tend to affect the small caps the largest. So the Russell has affected the largest. And the authors of the paper that wrote this speculated that that's because those are smaller investors, not institutions, and they can be more negatively influenced by this. Wow. Now we know why the Fed uh, follows geomagnetic storms, don't we? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Hey, we're going to take a break here, folks. We'll be back. Stay tuned. You're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Shane Smolian, the WolfTrader.com. Uh, Shane, on a personal note, this is some of the most interesting stuff you've ever presented here. I know you've shown it before, but the uh, way you're formatting it is great. Please continue. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to put it together in, the, in a coherent fashion today, so one, one day at a time. All right. Um, this is a, a, okay, so where, where are we now? So this is the actual rally that we're in right now, and so I've actually put a series of these geomagnetic storms on top of the rally. So when we had this first rally into here, the Fed was very strong into here. 
And, and I knew when we had this G4 and this G3 storm, it was knocking the market down, but it wasn't causing a decline. And I knew that meant there was underlying strength into there because normally the, G, the G3 and the G4 storms knock it down. But now we're starting to see some little tiny storms come up here and just erode away at this market. You can see it's been eroding, at, eroding away, eroding away. We had a G1, we had a G2. So the last couple of days we've had some small storms. And, you know, that's to me that's not a good sign because – if we do get a big storm this month, which we probably will, we'll probably get a G3 this month. Uh, it's, I think it's really going to give the market a hard time. So um, it, it's a different setup this this year than last year. But I think once we get into August and September, we really got to watch out for those storms because the underlying everything underlying this market is very very weak right now, very soft. And so there's some big air pockets in there, uh, and, and, you know, from the standpoint of the Fed that need that need to. They need market needs to come down. I mean, I just I have not seen a one instance of this since 2010 where has they been able to do it without the Fed. It just can't. Like that's just the world we live in. Uh, it's like I said, it's AI, artificial intelligence, quantitative easing, all this stuff. It's a different world now. So this is why we track the Fed. And so when that's negative, we really got to look for these storms to 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 come into the picture here. So I started a new a forecasting model. Uh, called the Wolf Trader Wave. And the reason I started this was because I wanted to take everything that I liked about Elliott Wave and build a new wave counting system. Uh, this one uses machine learning. And so this had forecasted this rally going all the way up and it had a sell signal on July the 7th. Um, so I, I, I just re-optimized this uh, and I'm going to be talking about the results tonight uh, in, the, in the market update video. But essentially, after the re-optimization, um, it's, it's revealed that this market is going to be headed lower now for a few months. And I'm going to talk about the exact dates of this, but this down wave is going to continue now. Uh, and so the reason I like this better than like an Elliott wave is because it, 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 you can re-optimize its machine learning for each market. And so it's, I find that for me, for what I want to accomplish, I think it's a lot better. It's more objective. And so to me, I think this, this, uh, is a more objective way to look at it. But this is saying that we're probably going to be headed down now uh, for for a few months. Now, we also have some Saturn cycles that we look at. Um, Saturn cycles are looking at um, Saturn in relationship to mo multiple planets. I find that from an astro standpoint, Saturn is one of the best, the best long-term uh, cycle forecasting tools that you can use. I like Kronos a lot too, the trans-Neptunian, but Saturn Saturn, and, and and other plants are very accurate. So this is showing us in, in decline right now. Uh, so again, here's another model. Like nothing is saying that we're supposed to be headed higher here. So when you combine that with the Fed uh, and you throw in some geomagnetic storms there, you've got a recipe for some trouble here brewing with these markets. Now, Larry, I know you're a big fan of the Bradley, right? I mean, everybody is, right? Yep. So the Bradley, if you take a look at the Bradley, this is falling all the way through 2024. Um, so why do I show this? Well, I, I haven't been a big fan of the Bradley when the Fed is strong um, because the Fed can over, overtake these astro indicators. So when you have a strong Fed, uh, the astro indicators can take a backseat to this. But since we do have a weak Fed right now, I do think we have to put this back on the table that this is a distinct possibility that we're going to be headed down now for a few months, possibly through the end of the year. And if the Fed does not ramp the internals back up and the Fed use remains in the cell, we're going to follow the Astro. I mean, th this is the default pattern that the markets follow. And Larry, you know, before the 2008, this used to be almost spot on every time, right? Yeah, it was awesome for quite a while. Then when they, they came in and started playing games, it changed quite a bit. But that's yeah, still useful. So, to yeah, some, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I just look at this as these are kind of the natural forces of the market. And again, there's there's no there's no cycle that I can look at to say, well, that one's rising and that's going – all of them are headed down. So I think that we are in a situation now where um, this market is is starting to, to break down a little bit here. Now, um, I'm going to look at some – I have some um, – some stocks here to look at. I have Apple. This is one of the ones I want to take a look at here. The reason why I want to look at Apple, and I can go on and on here. If anybody wants to look at different symbols, just let me know. But I'm going to I'm going to keep going here with Apple. Apple is really the driver of the Nasdaq, right? So this is really an important stock, um, one of the most important stocks to look at. The Fed juice on Apple went into a sell back here into June 29th. It's been in a sell ever since, uh, and so this is still headed lower for Apple. 
Now, Apple had this big run where it looked invincible and it looked like nothing could ever stop it and it was never going to stop going up and all of this stuff. Mm. Well, we had a Wolf Trader Wave on Apple and I just re-optimized it. And so Apple Wolf Trader Wave now um, shows us in a cell. And I'm going to be doing more of these Wolf Trader Waves for people who are subscribers and everybody who follows. I, you know, It takes a lot of processing power to do this. Uh, but this goes into a cell now on the on Apple, the Wolf Trader Wave, and it's suggesting that we're about 14 weeks down on Apple now too. So these are starting to all align in the same direction. When you look at Apple, when you look at the S and P, they're all starting to look. They're all starting to show the same profiles that we're going to have a down market here. And so when mm -hmm. when Apple starts to decline, I think you really need to pay attention because this is a this is a bellwether. I mean, I think certain other stock. I I mean, I personally like Broadcom better as a stock than Apple, but when you're talking about leading the market in terms of leaders, it's Apple. Okay, so you got to pay attention to what Apple is doing here. And again, this Wolf Trader wave suggests that we are going to be headed lower uh, for 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 a few weeks here, for a few months. Now, does it mean that you know it's some end of the world and market's going to crash and all stuff? But what I'm saying is, no matter how you look at this, it's headed lower here. Mm -hmm. Tesla's another one here where the Fed juice went into a cell on June 29th. You can see this here; it's still in a cell, headed lower. So when you start to look at all these stocks, so we look at Broadcom, Broadcom, the Fed use has been in a cell since 713. That's still headed lower. Uh, so go going down the line here, Bank of America, the Fed use goes into a cell on, on August the 1st. It's still headed lower. So there's really no – it's all starting to become very consistent here that there's a, there's a problem emerging here. There's a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, volatility had been in a cell since July the 6th, goes into a buy on August the 4th on the Fed use. Okay, so again, this goes along with the, the Paris trade that we talked about with the S&P. Uh, but down the line here, RK Innovation goes into a cell. Fed juice goes into a cell on July the 21st, still in a cell. You know, down the line again oh. here, as, uh, Spider Biotech it goes into a cell on July the 25th, still in a cell. So when I, you know, I always tell people the Fed juice is the single best indicator that we have for broad-based market movements. And if you want to know the path of, le of le the path of least resistance, it's the Fed juice. I don't care what market it is. I don't care if it's Tesla, Apple, S and P, gold, oil, dollar, euro, Bitcoin. It's the path of least resistance. So when I start to see these all lining up to the downside, I think we've got some issues here. Um, I'm going to go over to the currencies here real quick, and I'm going to start talking about the U.S. We've got dollar to here. Pay a few bills. We got to sure. pay a few bills, and then we'll sure. do the currencies when you come back. Okay? Absolutely. Great stuff, young man. Keep it up. We'll be right back with Shane Smolian, folks. Wolf, WolfTrader.com. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We're back, folks, with Shane Smolian. Please continue with the currencies. It's always of interest to me, so please continue. Sure. So... You know, one of the key things to look at is the U.S. dollar because it's it's kind of like the central nexus of so many so many commodities, and you know it affects it's inverse of many of these other uh, dollar-based pairs, currency pairs. It's inverse a lot of times of gold, S and P. It gives headwinds for the S and P. Let's just say that. Uh, so this has been in a buy now since 719. So you take a look back here. The interestingly how interesting how this goes into a buy right around when the S and P goes into the sell. Now this secondary. Uh, signal here is the quad lunar cycle this also goes into a buy this goes into a buy today so what does that mean that means that there's likely more headwinds coming for the s p and other markets like gold so to me this is painting a picture i always like to look at the dollar because it creates headwinds for like i said for gold and also the s p now the s p can go up with a rising dollar but i always just like to say it's headwinds you can still walk into a headwind it's just a little bit harder to do it uh, the other markets, like we see here, the Canadian dollar has been in this sell signal since 725. Uh, the, the British pound, same thing, headed down since 719. And the euro is set, headed down since 721. And so we can keep going down the list here. But um, like I said, the path of least resistance is the Fed juice. And so when we start to see the same scenario showing up over and over again, uh, that's something to, to pay attention to for sure. I do want to talk real quick here about oil. Um, we've been bullish on oil for quite a while here. You can see that the Fed juice has been in a buy all the way back here since 612. Uh, there was a little jog here where it went, it went sell and then buy back here on 724, but it's still in a buy going up here. And then the quad lunar cycle is also in a buy. So again, oil continues to look strong here. And one of the things I do want to point out, we talk a lot about Astro, but there was a Venus retrograde lately or in the, la in the, in the last few, like a, last month. And so the Venus retrograde chart for oil continues to show strength going forward here. So, Hey, thanks for joining us, my friend. We'll have you on again soon, and be safe. Thanks, Larry. Take care. Thank you, Shane. We'll be back tomorrow, folks. Our guest will be Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems